Welcome to a virtual Celebrate Black History tour at the High Museum of Art. Today, we are going to celebrate the Black, African, and African American art and artists that are featured in the museum. We will also talk a little bit about the history of the United States and look at art that shows us important moments throughout time. Speaking of history, Black history is everyone's history. There are so many artists, leaders, and people we could celebrate. We only have a short amount of time today, so we are going to highlight just a few works of art. Be sure to look on the HIES website for more ways to celebrate Black history. If you have paper and a pencil handy, please sketch along with me on our journey. In this tour, we're going to start over 10,000 years ago. And then we're going to hop through time to look at the ways Black, African, and African-American people have shaped all that we do. Ready to time travel? Let's get started. We found our first work of art. It's actually one stone that is about two feet tall. It's shaped like a long oval and is being held up by a brace. Here's a side view of it. The stone is rounded and very smooth. It's smaller at the bottom and flat on top. If you look very closely, you can see a small spot toward the bottom that is in the shape of a very small oval. If we could see this in person, we would be able to tell that it's almost the exact same shape as a thumb. Would you believe that this stone is over 10,000 years old? The High Museum is still doing research on how old this stone is, but we're pretty sure it came from the Sahara Desert, located in Central and North Africa. Did you know, thousands of years ago, the Sahara Desert was not a desert, but was actually covered in grass and was a perfect place for farming? People used to farm here, and we think that this was a tool for farming. Remember that thumbprint we looked at earlier? Do you see how this may have been a tool for farming? How do you think the tool was used? Why do you think the top is flat? Researchers are still trying to figure this out, so your guess is as good as ours. This tool shows us that people in Africa have been inventing tools and farming for many, many years. Now, let's fast forward in time by thousands of years to the west coast of Africa, to the country of Cameroon. Cameroon is located in central West Africa by the Atlantic Ocean. What do you see in this work of art? Can you see the long trunk and floppy ears? This is an elephant. This elephant is blue with blue ears on one side and black and white patterns on the other side. The elephant has long white tusks and white diamond shaped eyes. The neck is made of a pattern with similar diamond shapes of blue, light blue, and white. The elephant has a little pink tongue at the end of its long blue trunk. What sound does an elephant make? Can you make the sound with me when I count to three? One, two, three. <coughs> this elephant is actually made to be worn on top of your head during ceremonies. And can you believe that this elephant is made of thousands of glass beads. How cool is that? The artist is from the Bamileke people, which is one of the largest groups of people in Cameroon. The mask was made about 200 years ago. Now, around the same time in the United States of America, many things were happening. Let's talk about one of those things. Do you know who this is? 
does this penny help? This is Abraham Lincoln. This sculpture was made by the artist Randolph Rogers around the year 1866, one year after Mr. Lincoln died. This sculpture is more than two feet tall and about two feet wide. It's carved out of white marble, which is a type of rock, and shows us the top half of a man. The man has a beard and is wearing a bow tie. He is wearing a jacket draped around him. Abraham Lincoln is famous for signing the Emancipation Proclamation, which declared that enslaved Africans and African Americans were free. Mr. Lincoln was the United States 16th president. He legally freed over 3 million enslaved people. Even though he signed this into law, it still took over 100 years for black and African American people to be considered equal to white people. And there is still work to be done. Abraham Lincoln is one of many, many people who helped all Americans to have equal rights. Let's fast forward in time again, about 100 years. This is a photograph of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his family at dinner. In the photograph, we see Dr. King at the end of a long table with his children, wife, and a family. They are eating food in a room that has flowered wallpaper. Above Dr. King, there is a picture of Mahatma Gandhi, a peaceful activist or someone who stands up for what they believe in. Like we talked about with the last work of art, Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863, but black people were still not truly free. 100 years later, Dr. King and his wife, Coretta Scott King, worked hard for equal rights for everyone. They were considered activists, just like Mahatma Gandhi. Dr. King and Mrs. King did so much for Black and African American people, and for all people. They marched for the belief that all people are equal, and they helped get laws passed that made this a reality. There is still so much work to do, even today, but we are grateful for activists like Dr. King and Mrs. King, who paved the way to equality. Let's fast forward again. Let's go to 2011 and see the work of Radcliffe Bailey, who takes inspiration from his family history to create works of art. What do you see here? This work of art is over 10 feet tall. It's mostly shades of black and blue with some gray and brown patches. There is glitter and velvet or a soft material, and outlines of a person in the bottom left-hand corner. The person has lines drawn from their eyes to the outline of a boat. There are black boxes and ladders or train tracks scattered throughout a galaxy of stars and clouds. There is so much to see here. Let's meet the artist. His name is Radcliffe Bailey, and he lives in Atlanta, Georgia. He is still creating art today. Radcliffe Bailey was born in 1968 and creates art about the Black and African American experience. He also thinks a lot about his family heritage. His family was part of the transatlantic slave trade, which forced millions of Africans from their homes in Africa to the United States over 400 years ago. Radcliffe Bailey's family was enslaved in America. Once enslaved people were freed, many of them moved to northern states to get away from the racist South. Radcliffe Bailey's family did just that. This work of art is about Radcliffe Bailey's family and how they moved from Africa to America to the North. Radcliffe Bailey's dad was a train engineer, so the artist included images of train tracks in this work of art. 
Can you see them? Now it's your turn. If you were to create a work of art about your family heritage, what would it look like? What would you include? Are there symbols or things that represent something else that you would include? Could you sketch them out on your paper? If you have old magazines and with the help of an adult, perhaps you could cut out symbols from them and glue them to a piece of paper. Then you could paint or collage on top of it, just like Radcliffe Bailey did. Artists create works of art to show us about their past. We are lucky to have Black and African American artists who share their experience with the rest of the world, so we can better understand everyone's story. We would love for you to share your artwork with us. Ask a teacher or caregiver to help share your artwork with the High Museum. Continue your adventure through art with more activities, videos, and links on the Learn tab at www.hi.org. Thank you for joining us on a tour of Celebrating Black History.